Article 2, Section 1 of the United States Constitution provides that the executive power shall be vested in a President of the United States of America. He shall hold his office during the term of four years, and together with the Vice President, chosen for the same term, be elected as follows. Each state shall appoint in such manner as the legislature thereof may direct a number of electors, equal to the whole number of senators and representatives to which the state uh, may be uh, uh, on, and it goes on and on in detail there. In the modern era, all this means that the long process of determining presidential candidates begins at the Iowa caucuses in January, and in February, the primary at the state of New Hampshire. In the age of cable television, historic events such as the year 2000 New Hampshire primary mean a media colossus of technicians, equipment, and journalists descend upon the city of Manchester, New Hampshire every four years. I am one of those technicians. I work for the Cable Satellite Public Affairs Network, C-SPAN. In late January of 2000, I left the comfort of my home in Maryland and my wife Simone, my six-year-old son Nick, and my three-year-old son Jimmy, and drove a microwave transmission van to New Hampshire. My colleague Darren drove with me. Upon our arrival, we C-SPAN technicians unloaded a large rental truck which contained all we would need to produce daily live programs from New Hampshire. Next, a talking headset was erected, and then we were ready to go. During my first week in New Hampshire, I taped several candidate appearances. George W. Bush gave a talk to an expanding high technology company. Steve Forbes shook hands at a restaurant. I captured the spin room of a Republican candidate's debate. I was even present at the pancake breakfast where candidate Gary Bauer fell off the stage. On China, we've got a policy, or at least our leaders do, that looks more like Clinton's policy than Reagan's policy. Oh, in economics, we're tilted toward big business instead of main street and working class America. So. It's looking good, Darren. He's walking in the door right now, in the back. He's their holding room in the back, though. They won't see him for a while. Finding it difficult to obtain the footage of candidate Bauer falling off the stage, I'll show you this simple reenactment. He flipped a pancake up in the air, and in attempting to catch it, fell backwards off the stage and through some curtains. He almost immediately reappeared again up on the stage, uninjured. We used the C-SPAN bus to broadcast live coverage of a Democratic Party event in which candidates Bill Bradley and Al Gore appeared. Outside the hotel, a few protesters waited for the vice president. So what brings you out here? Politicians and they're lying, and we just want it to stop, and hopefully we'll make a difference, you know? Everyone thinks that college kids, you know, don't really care about the campaign and everything. You know, kids, oh, they don't even read up on it. But well, we read up on it. And we do know one thing, that Al Gore is lying to us. We don't want another president that's going to lie to us. We want someone who's honest and is going to work for the people. You can get on TV, you can get in the newspapers, and then people can really find out and understand that there is something going on behind the scenes, you know? And once you get on that TV, like I got on the Globe the other day, and I look at it, I see the picture, and I'm like, wow, you know, you can really make a difference if you go out there and you try, you know? So people that's People are going to wonder why those kids dress like monks. Exactly. Maybe they'll find out. Yeah. We also used the bus to cover a Steve Forbes campaign rally in a hotel ballroom. She's simply going to, uh, to finish up her interviews and then we're going to go to a nice wide shot of show people milling and leaving and you can take it whenever you want. Thank you so much. Very nice. <laughs> then finally came February 1st, primary day. Almost eight o'clock, and I am uh, working at 3.30 p.m. today. I will be going to the George Bush, George 
W. Bush. Headquarters. To operate a live vehicle so that we can capture the reaction and comments by Mr. Bush as results from the voting come pouring in. The cream of wheat doesn't fit into the cup very well, but there it is. Time to record some thoughts in my journal. Mama told me that you were helping her make, make, cook something and that you cracked the eggs. I'll be home pretty soon, Jimmy. I have to candidly admit that I run so damn fast that the hotel had to replace four machines during my two week stay. I'm all dressed and ready to go to lunch and then off to work. I don't know either. Hey Richard, how are Hi. you doing? Good, how are you? Good. He doesn't like, yeah, iced tea. Iced tea. Iced tea. That's all he ever drinks, iced tea. Iced tea. Time to go down the lobby and go to work. You know, I'm just trying to be the glue that holds it all together. What's the name of the bush? I did what? I took your map. Strout, Stroutenberg. It's like a scrum in here. Shotgun for me? Just do a text message. I'm out of heartache and I want to be there. I want us to be there tight, right, Richard? You're going to get the pain? Pain, heartache, elation, uh, everything. It's Andy. This is like Shakespeare. Thing. Okay, but it, it's, there's, it's like a pamphlet from the college itself, and it shows a map of the campus. It doesn't show you how to get over there, though, but I can show you on this map here how to get over there. It's very simple. We're right here on this corner. And St. Anselm's is right here mm -hmm. on this corner. Your easiest way is to go granite down across the granite. river. Turn the main sort of mirrors to the left mm -hmm. to this uh, Mast Barney Road. Take a right on Mast Barney, St. Anselm College Drive. To the left, and take this first entrance into the college. Okay. I have your video and I have your audio. All right. The uh, RTS can be white. Okay. Right. Many of their scheduled visits in the voting precincts. Reporting live in Manchester, January, and it's sent a five back to you, Chet. Are making this race very interesting. They have a history of.
of bucking the establishment. Back in 1996, they voted for Pat Buchanan over frontrunner Bob Dole. This time around, Governor George Bush and Senator John McCain are in a race that may be too close to call. Tonight my uh, job is fairly simple. I sit in this truck and I observe the camera and the audio, make sure everything is okay. I'm sending a microwave signal a short few miles over to Manchester, downtown Manchester, to the roof of the Holiday Inn. I'm just sitting in the truck this evening. Everybody can leave New Hampshire and return New Hampshire back to the way it should be. Uh, quiet and peaceful. It's been quite a dissension, as you might imagine. There's a lot of folks have come in, uh, media types from all over the country, uh, to cover what has been a media circus. And polls are showing that possibly as much as an 18% lead uh, by uh, McCain, which uh, certainly, or 18% lead, I should say, uh, which is, should not be a surprise. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see. In fact, we could hear from Bush as early as 8 o'clock. Well, New Hampshire enjoys being a bump in the road kind of state. New Hampshire has upset apple carts before, and apple cart got upset tonight. South Carolina is not like that. South Carolina responds to Governor Bush's message much more. He's expected to show up here at the College of St. Anselm's in Goffstown in just about an hour or two. As many as 12 states have caucuses or primaries coming up. It has begun to seep in elsewhere in the Republican establishment. Now, what does that mean for George W. Bush? And now, well, it does not that to be the type of war party. I'm all nestled in here now for my dinner meal, waiting for the event to happen, and the event is uh, several hours away at least. room and we bought a case of beer if you would like to come next door and join us when, when you're talking on the phone a nutfield auburn ale is the best ale to choose the day after the primary we broke down all of our equipment and packed up the truck after two weeks in new hampshire i was eager to drive home and be with my family again i got home just in time for a rare washington dc snowstorm <coughs> while i played hey. inside with the boys yeah. Simone shoveled Daddy? snow outside. What? I probably felt a little guilty, but Simone likes the exercise, and obviously, I had worked like a dog in New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. 